What's up guys? Today of course I'm going to be doing a tank tutorial on for Battlefield 1. I'll be discussing the three tanks, the strengths and weaknesses of each, the loadouts I prefer, and best strategies in terms of attack, defense, attacking other tanks, best angles of dealing the most damage, weak points on tanks, etc. It'll all be covered today. It is a longer video and I know life gets in the way so you can of course watch it in one sitting. Uh, and let me know if you do watch it in one sitting or you can come back and watch it in stages. But I'll cover everything I know about here and of course if there's anything missing, I'll make it in a different video. So let's start. First thing you should know when you get into a tank is that when you spawn in, you convert from one of the regular four classes into the mechanic class. This only applies to the driver. As the mechanic class, you can repair a damaged tank from inside without exiting by holding the repair button, which is X on PC, and I believe it's down on the D-pad for consoles. But that there are downsides. Doing so makes the tank immobile. If you take any damage during this process, it cancels the repair. So make sure you're far away from grenades, major damage threats like other tanks, and even snipers because they, they cancel the damage process. And a lot of the time what will happen is you might be at 30 damage, you might repair the tank, a sniper tags you, stops the repair, tank comes in, finishes the job. So make sure you're very aware of your situation, or you have situational awareness of what's going on before you decide to repair. Trying to repair it mid-match, waste of time, you're already dead. Typically, each time uh, the repair icon does a full revolution, it does about 32 repair points. You can also get out and repair the tank from the outside. It does seem quicker, and it's very similar to Battlefield 3 and 4, and even Bad Company 2 if you've done it before, where what the one full revolution is the full tank repair. Is, uh, but if, and their support class also allows you to uh, repair teammates' vehicles if you have, like, the I forgot what it's called. I think it's, it's just the wrench perk that allows you to repair enemy or, uh, teammates' vehicles as well as damage enemy vehicles. But getting out to repair does leave you quite vulnerable, so make sure the area is clear and make sure you're repairing away from the area of direct fire. Now, the differences in the tanks. There are three different tanks in Battlefield 1 and each presents a, di uh, a relatively different skill set. Of course, I'll break down the pros and cons to each of these, but I have individual breakdowns of each of the classes of each of the tanks in separate videos. Have a look at those as well if you want a much more comprehensive and very detailed breakdown of all of the different variants of all the tanks in those videos. I didn't include them in this video though because the, hour, the video would probably be at least over an hour. So what I'll do for the classes is talk about the best ones for certain maps and certain situations and the ones I like. So let's get to it. First one, light tank. Only one person can be in this tank. It has lighter armor than the other two tanks but of course it has far more mobility. It's best used for medium to longer range encounters with your teammates alongside you to prevent you from having to deal with teammate or threats around you and in front of you. For classes, I really like the light flanker tank class for infantry maps because uh, the case auto shell, which is basically like the, a full auto canister shell from Battlefield 4, absolutely shreds infantry. And the 37mm 30, HE has excellent splash damage against infantry. It can deal decent damage against lighter armored vehicles, but it's terrible against something like the heavy tank. So, and But for the heavy tank, it has mines, so what you can do is bait the enemy armor into following you, drop the mines, boom, they're done. It's not, But again, this class is not great against heavy armor, So, but it's fantastic in infantry maps, so the light flanker tank class is great for infantry maps. I really like the light howitzer class as well for the light tank because it's it's the best of both worlds. You can deal with both armor and infantry with an HMG and 75 millimeter howitzer. It also has excellent uh, countermeasures in smokescreen and emergency repair, which makes absolutely deadly flanking combinations with smokescreen and getaway at the same time. It's the most well-rounded class. You could use this in pretty much any map, uh, but I do feel the light flanker tank class would actually be better for infantry maps, but again, light flank or light howitzer can be used anywhere. Next, the heavy tank. Up to six people can fit in this tank at once for some of the classes, with the driver having the most firepower. In general, it's it's very well armored, but it's it's very slow and it's nowhere near as agile. And but of course, that's to be expected compared to the light tank. For this tank, of course, you can't turn the turret 360 degrees. Therefore, you have to turn the entire tank as well as the turret to shoot shots on your flanks. Be aware this can leave you out of position if you get greedy and start chasing infantry players and another tank shows up. By then you have to turn all the way back around to try and shoot them, as well as infantry to your flanks. 
So this one is a teamwork tank. It, it highly stresses the importance of the teamwork and passenger slots to keep infantry away from you. I really like the heavy assault tank and the heavy flamethrower variants. Both have great measures to deal with infantry and armor and have two great countermeasures. I want to make something of note though, the third, the third class, the heavy breakthrough might actually be better against armor, but because it has supply drop instead of a great countermeasure like smoke screen or poisonous gas, uh, that's why I don't particularly choose it. Both have great attack and defense capabilities, the heavy armor or the heavy assault and heavy flamethrower. So those would be the two that I would regularly use on the regular basis. The land ship is a very team oriented tank. You will struggle if all three members of the tank are not on the same page or if the driver decides to take it himself and no one decides to hop in the passenger seats. It's a th of course, it's a three person tank with the exception of one kit. Side gunners have access to cannons and canister shells at all times. The driver, usually with the exception of one kit, has a machine gun for infantry. And with the, the exception is, of course, my favorite class. It's the Tank Hunter Landship. Of course, it's best against vehicles and vehicle-centered maps. Both the gunners and the driver can deal immense amount of damage with the cannons. If the, and, the, and well, the driver itself doesn't have a cannon. It has a tank of air. Uh, so if you're, deal, if you're familiar with the Tank Hunter class, it, uh, the, the, yeah, the Tank Elite class, that's what it is. So with the driver shooting that, because he doesn't have an LMG, he just has the tank of air, and you have the two cannons on the drivers, you can deal incredible amounts of damage to, uh, to enemy vehicles. It also has fantastic countermeasures in the gas emitter for people that try and flank around to try and, say, dynamite you, and emergency repair if you need a quick getaway. But it's weak in infantry maps because the tank of air has a long reload time, and it's you can't really accurately hit very far targets away all the time compared to the other classes so that's of note for infantry maps i prefer the squad support land ship you and the passengers have the ability to deal immense damage to infantry and the gunners if focused they can take out armor the countermeasures are quite weak though so as it suggests in infantry maps you're going to want to stay close to people near you and have your teammates in the tank try and take out anything on your flanks so you're definitely not going to want to push into areas, even even though it's well suited to take out infantry, without having some teammates support on your side. One final caveat in the landship, be very weary when attacking a fully loaded landship, because at all times in all classes they have two different cannons that can attack you, not to mention the tank hunter class if the driver picks that. You can be rendered disabled or dead extremely quickly if you take them for granted. So proceed with caution if you see one. Though it's not a tank, I'd be remiss to not mention the armored truck. The low, it has extremely low armor and it can't deal with tanks in close quarters one-on-one -on -one battles, but in longer range encounters it can be deadly. It only holds one person, and of note, when switching between the secondary attack and the primary LMG, you cannot drive the vehicle. It will just slow down or completely stop. The two classes I like the most for it are the Armored Artillery, which offers an LMG and an anti-tank cannon, and, the, and the, the perks are great for it. It offers emergency repair and anti-tank mines, so anything chasing you, pop the mines, boom. Uh, and the anti-tank uh, cannon is just so good against everything. It blows everything up. And lastly, the anti-aircraft truck, of course, great for anything flying in the air, and it has emergency repair and smoke screen for flanks and getting away quickly. And the anti the anti-aircraft's good at doing splash damage against infantry too. So both of those aren't bad, but it's a very long distance situational vehicle. I'd much prefer a tank for the most part. Next, when dealing damage to a tank, it's going to take probably at least four to five shots to kill on average, depending, of course, on the angle you hit, the type of uh, the type of tank you're facing, and the type that you're driving. You do not want glancing blows at 45 degrees because not only will it do less overall damage than a perpendicular 90 degree shot, there is a chance that it could ricochet and do no damage. You'll want a shot as close as possible to, as to, uh, to 90 degrees for maximum damage. You should also want to attack from the sides or the back as much as possible because the front of the tank is the most heavily armored area. Knowing this, it means you should be slightly angled when you shoot 
because of the previously stated info, it means that someone hitting you at a slight angle has a shot that, that there has a chance that their shot will be ricocheted, and you'll be dealing less overall damage on the shots, or they'll be dealing less overall damage on the shots that actually hit you. One note on the light tank: it does have an extra piece of metal on the back that was historically there for recoil management, as well as not falling backwards when traversing across hills and trenches. So it actually does serve to provide a sort of mechanism of dealing less damage to the engine on the back. You can still hit the engine, you just have to aim in that middle area between that little piece of metal jutting out and the top turret. But just be aware of that. It might take an extra shot if you're only hitting that back metal piece. Additionally, the tank has three areas that can be disabled. It has the engine, as I mentioned, the turret on the top, and the tracks. Each take about two shots to disable, potentially more depending on your accuracy and the type of tank being attacked. Track disables kill mobility, of course, but be careful because most tanks have the ability, especially on the heavies, to repair their track or emergency repair immediately. Taking out the turret prevents a counterattack, and is usually where I like to target if I'm stuck in a battle where I'm attacking a tank from the front, especially on heavy tanks. If a heavy tank can attack you, there's a good chance that, well, because he's so slow, he's not going to be able to retreat very quickly, and if you have teammate assault players, you'll just gang up on him. Even if light tanks can take an extra shot from the back, like I mentioned previously, I'd still highly advise attacking from the side or the back, because even if it takes that one additional extra shot or two to kill, to kill the enemy, He's, you'll see, because he's not going to know where you are, or he's, it's going to be too late before you've already put an extra two shots in him, you already have the advantage. Uh, and I want to emphasize that, the, the importance of that sneak attack, of, of them not knowing that you're there, gives you a significant advantage 100% of the time. If you have a view of the engine, it doesn't matter that that little piece of extra metal is there, because you can still do additional damage with the engine. It's a serious ad advantage to attack from the sides or from behind, and don't, don't dismiss it. Now let's get into the strategies for survival and best attacking. Much like, like my sniping tutorial, I want to stress that spotting everything is pivotal. Spot, and it's Q on PC, RB on Xbox One, and R1 on PS4. Infantry, other vehicles, planes, and especially for the squad leader, objectives for the extra squad points not only do much better for your actual scoreboard individual success, but it lets everyone know where everything is on the map. Additionally, tell teammates in a tank to spot everything nearby that can be a threat. Ideally, if you're communicating with your gunners in real time in chat, you can sort out where threats are, and not only are you, gonna get, are you going to get more kills, you're going to have much better safety. Spotting also serves to let you know the enemy's class, so prioritize assault players as they're the means of taking you out best. And leading directly in from that, target priority is a, is a skill you have to build. There's an element of patience with it that ends up being beneficial. I see so many tank drivers when I'm a passenger, they just shoot at the first thing they see. And like I said previously, I tend to prioritize assault players, and you can tell who's an assault player because it's like that little flame above their head when they're spotted and you absolutely want to take them out first. Say in a hypothetical scenario, you're driving up to an area and there's three different uh, infantry players in front of you. You spot them all, two of them are medics, one's an assault. The medic guy's closest to you, shoot the assault guy first. He's the guy that's going to be doing by far the most damage to you, take him out first, versus the medic guys that aren't going to be able to do much, if at all, to you. So, in a case where I've seen a lot of people shoot the medic guy first, the assault guy might throw two grenades and that's 60, 40, 60 damage on you immediately. And if you'd, shoot in the, if you'd shot the assault guy first, you'd have zero damage on you. So, it plays out. If it's, it's a bit different, it's completely subjective and there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to multiple vehicles though. Because a lot of the time, I'd probably suggest if you see two vehicles ahead of you and you're the only vehicle, you shouldn't probably take that encounter. You're at a disadvantage immediately. But, if you're forced to, uh, again, it's completely up to you. You can take out the one, ideally, that's weaker first, so that way it reduces it to a one-on-one -on -one encounter. Or you can attack the one that, well, you if a guy sees you, you have to attack him first. You have to. And hopefully the one that doesn't see you doesn't turn to see you. Or if you have the advantage and no one sees you yet, I'd say take out the stronger one. 
So if there's a light tank and a heavy tank and neither of them see you, I'd say engage the heavy one first. He's the bigger threat. He's going to take longer to kill. If you have an additional shot or two on him, that's great. But it's subjective. You'll know over time with experience as you play it. But th uh, but especially in infantry, if a, if a guy's a bigger threat to you and he's right in front of you, take him out first. Don't just shoot at the first thing you see. Have that little bit of a second or two of patience to really pick out who you should target first. I try to position myself, like I was saying previously as well, when I'm in a tank battle, so that I'm at a slight angle so that his shots either ricochet or, I'm de or they're dealing less damage to me. I also like to have cover around, and it can be anything. It can be a rock, it can be a building, it can be an elevation change in sand dunes, everything. Something to conceal where you are or, or like put you, them at a bad angle to attack you. And I like to use a technique called pillaring, which is basically fire, retreat behind cover, Pull forward, fire, retreat, and just repeat the process. Uh, don't develop a pattern with it though, otherwise you completely negate every bit of that advantage you had. So pull forward, shoot, retreat, wait a second. Pull forward, retreat, or pull forward, shoot, retreat, wait three seconds. Vary up your timing and vary up your distance. It makes you a much more difficult target and allows you to kill any vehicle in the open because, I mean, he's going to have a hard time hitting you and you're going to hit him every time. General rule when I get into a tank or vehicle is to prioritize survival over short-term destruction. If I get a few shots but I'm not disabled, say I'm down to about 60% health, if I absolutely need to take someone out because he's about to shoot me, do it. But if you feel you're in trouble and one more hit may disable you, retreat and heal before it becomes a high risk of getting you blown up. I've seen lots of players over the years, uh, they're at 60 damage and they're like, oh, well, I'm above 50. They take one more hit uh, to the track, they're disabled, and now they're, they're done. They're dead. So your goal should be to take as many objectives as possible throughout the match and to as, for as long as you can. So the best way to do that is to make sure you're not entering an area that you have a low chance of surviving to take a single objective or to get a few kills. Basically, the kills will be there the entire game. Don't rush in. Help your team by staying alive. Don't rush in and get greedy going for one or two kills. And that also means when you're going in toward an objective and you know people are planning mines, look on the ground for mines. You, it's taking that extra second or two to get to the objective by making sure that an area doesn't have mines on the ground. It's not going to get you blown up. It's going to help you. This also includes making sure you know exactly what kit you're using as I discussed above. Uh, I've seen lots of players just choose one kit and they're like, ah, whatever, who cares? Uh, it takes you two seconds to change the kits once you have them unlocked. So if you know you're entering an infantry map, switch to something that's going to be best suited for infantry maps. Uh, and if you're going into one that's, of course, a vehicle map, don't choose an infantry one, even if it's your best actual loadout. Because if you get into a vehicle map versus someone that has a vehicle suited class, if you're an infantry tank, I don't care how good you are, you're going to get blown up. At least by a good tank driver. Smoke, I'll take advantage of your kit as well. Smoke makes an excellent way to conceal your retreat, and it makes you harder to shoot as you conduct repairs. Make sure you know exactly what your kit offers you before you enter into a game. Like, uh, even I've made that mistake a few times where I'm like, oh, okay, I'll have emergency repair, and it ends up it's only track repair, and then next thing you know, I've blown up because I made that mistake. So take two seconds to figure out exactly what your kit is, memorize it after a while, you know exactly what you're up against. Also tied to survival, constantly move your tank. You should be always moving even if it's just back and forth. It makes you a more difficult pl uh, target for assault players targeting you from afar with AT rockets. And now because tanks have blind spots behind them and even slightly to the back sides, even in third person, staying moving makes you a much more difficult target for enemies to sneak up and dynamite you. I've run over a lot in Battlefield 1 even with the game not being out very long just by keeping moving because I, I can't see because of the blind spots. So I just keep moving, I back up, and I run a guy over, and hey, less of a threat. And again, like I have said, like I said earlier, this really emphasizes the importance of teammates in tanks that can hold passengers. So you absolutely want to stay mobile in the light tank because it already offers the highest mobility. That's its strength. In certain maps, there's lots of alleyways and height advantages that come from buildings for the enemy to have, all, to have over you. So you have to be wary of this. Uh, you can become vulnerable from two different elevations if you're going down a corridor and a building has two different areas to attack you. So 
My advice is to try to avoid cluttered spaces and areas with two different elevation points because there's just no way you're going to be able to account for both. The turret most of the time on a lot of tanks doesn't even reach the highest level on the second level. So there's no way you'd be able to fight off enemies on two different flanks. Just stay out there and try and support your teammates from afar. The only one exception I would make to prioritizing survival though is in a close match nearing the end and you say you have to really make a push for that objective, you might as well push as hard as you can to try and get that objective to try and win the match. If you die, so be it. At least you watched yourself lose doing something rather than dying for nothing. It's a old Rambo quote, sort of a similar take on it. The, the main way to help you survive longer though is always to have a getaway option as most tanks uh, do not move as quickly as they did in previous games and to make sure you like I said previously you have some form of cover and it can be anything basically like like I said previously it could be rocks buildings elevation changes hills basically something that will absorb a rocket or or make it a much harder shot to hit you 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 will find you will live so much longer if you have cover around you and you don't just run around in the open use your imagination there are times when you will almost certainly be swarmed or will lose a tank battle. Swallow your pride and know when to flee. A group of enemies with rockets and anti-tank grenades means you should probably retreat immediately instead of trying to go for that extra one or two kills. Try and find another route to attack that objective or attack from further away. Directly tied to this, when driving a tank, try to have infantry at your flanks at all times to repair you, uh, as well as being able to take out other threats near you. Solo, type, driver, solo tank drivers can do great, but having passengers and infantry on the ground next to you makes you a formidable force against any team. Another point I should make, get used to driving in first and third person, especially third person. You're going to see so many more threats and targets and also see the terrain around you. Is there something that might impede your retreat if you need to get away quick? Is there a hill that the, ta the heavy tank might have a harder time climbing now that you've just traversed down the hill? Third person helps you a ton here, especially in Battlefield 1 considering that World War 1 tank designs don't have like digital screen and 180 degree perfect sight lines. It allows you to shoot well on the move as well, which minimizes the threat of someone getting a good shot at you because you've stopped. Directly tied to this, I'd like to do sometimes a thing called minimap driving. If you're popping smoke and can't really see what's ahead of you and certainly not what's behind you as you're retreating, Use the minimap and follow the road networks on your minimap to avoid smacking into buildings or other things that might impede your progress. It saved my life many times, believe me. The other thing too, if you're going to mount an attack, you want to keep everything, everything and everyone that's in front of you, uh, or keep everything in front of you, I should say. If enemies are on your side or you suspect they might be flanking and getting behind you, retreat. Uh, don't just rush into an area that looks quiet either. It could be a trap. Scan the area for mines, uh, hiding assault players, other vehicles, etc. So the one thing I want you to keep in mind here too, uh, if it looks like it's too quiet, more than likely it's not quiet and it's about to get loud really soon. Survey it from, a, from afar before charging in and hopefully if you have teammates along your side, they're going to help you out. When you're in the gunner seat, spot everything and make sure to guard the area that, th guard the, area that the gun points to. Uh, you're doing the favor for the driver. You, uh, you can't really compete with them as much as you would in the previous games because you can't like rotate the gun around the whole way. Uh, but you're there to assist the driver. You're not there to be the star. Run as the support class with the mechanic tool to repair the tank when needed. When exiting the tank, make sure you look to an area where the gun is and that's where you're going to exit. To wrap up pretty soon here, I've seen this many, many times, but if the enemy bails out on their tank too early, don't destroy it. Take it, and if you're support, repair it, or ask for someone to repair it for you in the chat. Uh, add another person to the add another adding another weapon to the team uh, is well going to help you out an awful lot. The same logic applies to you, though. We all make mistakes. If it looks like you're going to get blown up, go down with the ship. For the same reason why you would want to steal theirs, don't allow them to steal yours. Uh, and that's it. If there's anything I've missed, I'm sure there's some I've missed. My other videos are going to cover more of the extensive breakdowns and all of the pros and cons to each class for each tank. So stay tuned for those if I haven't already posted them. 
Uh, if you feel I missed something, post it in the comments. Uh, and that's it. If you liked the video, please leave a like. Uh, subscribe if you're new and you'd like to see more of these videos. Share on social media if you think it would help somebody out. And that's it. Thanks for watching, YouTube.